So what are best practices as a genealogist? What are some of the things that you can do that will make you a good genealogist that gets results? I ran around Roots Tech and talked to a bunch of different people and asked them those very questions. I asked them to give me their top one, two, or three ideas for the things that they do that help them be successful in their genealogy research. I talked to professional genealogists and I just talked to regular people that were there at Roots Tech, some with a lot of experience and some without as much experience. But they all had thoughts and ideas that are helping them to be successful. And you want to know what those are. So check this out. When I started slowing down and really looking at the records and not just pulling out the little tidbits of like, oh, well, this record looks like fun and, and it's telling me this little tidbit, but really slowing down and realizing that by slowing down, you're actually going to make more progress and reduce a lot of frustration. So that's that really helped me in my research. You need to you need to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. Don't. Don't really try to do it on your own. You, while you can, see the thing with me is, oh, I'm computer savvy. I can figure this out, which I am and I did, but uh, there's so much more. Two tips for how to be a successful genealogist. One is write down, just write down what you're finding, right? So I use notes on every person in my tree. If I find a census record, I write a note about it. If I hear something from my mom, I write a note about it. So just leave yourself notes, but don't leave them on all the little scraps of paper and notebook because you'll get lost. So I put all of that information in my tree so that it's always right there with the person. The second thing that I would say is recognize that you don't know what you don't know and be willing to get the education that you need. There's YouTube videos and there is um, help articles and there are blog posts and there are digital courses you can take and there's Roots Tech, like lots of opportunities to educate yourself. So the first time you get to a new generation or get into a new country with your ancestors or even a new state, be willing to go out and seek that education that you need. Okay, what would be some of your best tips? My best tip, and I do a lot of these consultations for family search library, and so almost everybody, even including intermediate and even advanced people, I tell them the first thing they do, whenever you go to a new country, a new county, a new province, a new state, a new city, wherever you move in geography especially, whenever you're trying to do a new skill, go to the research wiki on Family Search and look up the pages that are on the, the country page or the city page, look up all the articles, get familiar with what's there, get familiar with what's available on the records page, and go from there instead of just all of a sudden going to the catalog and trying to find what you're looking for. You know, that's such a great trip tip. The other thing that I really think is important too is that on the wiki pages it tells you when counties were created and from where they were created. And when because, the records started. Yeah, because it, because the records are generally held where they were created. So that's a really good suggestion because the county that your ancestor may have lived in, it actually may have been a different county when they were born or when they were 20 or whatever. So the wiki is just invaluable. I love that suggestion. It's the best. It's Thank the, you. It's the best tool, I think personally, it's the best tool for genealogists that there is, especially amateur genealogists on online. Know your why. Find something that you're passionate in and go with it. Just roll with it and you'll figure things out along the way. Make, make, you good make a now. timeline. <laughs> <laughs> I just did a video on oh, that. Did you? <laughs> Timelines yeah. help so much in being able to sort out your information and see what you're missing and how things relate to each other. Best steps for successful genealogy, we're going to go backwards. So number three, uh, scan everything and then stop messing with it. Scan it and store it well. Don't keep pulling out the original documents. Don't keep pulling out the original photos. Leave them alone because every time you mess with something you might damage it. That's why you need to invest time and money into getting good high quality scans that you can keep working with so that the original stuff stays preserved. Um, number two, I would say connect, whether that's connecting with people who are doing genealogy so that they can help you you know, give you tips and tricks, um, connecting with teachers in the industry so that you can learn the best ways to go about things. And of course, connecting with the people in your family, you know, letting people know, hey, I'm, I'm working on this, I'm doing my family history. Because people are sitting on things that you don't know that they have. And they're waiting for somebody to step up and say, hey, let's get this organized, let's turn this into a story. Um, and so you could be that person, but you gotta let them know that you're working on it. And then the last one, 
this is like the one that's closest to my heart. You have to remember that it's not just about what you're doing with your family history. You have to always be saving with the idea that somebody is going to get that from you someday. You need to be saving your work. You need to be leaving a breadcrumb trail of source citations and things like that for people behind you. And you need to make sure that your stuff isn't saved somewhere, that if something happens to you, heaven forbid, um, nobody can get to it. It needs to be public. It needs to be accessible. You need to have told people, hey, this is what I've got. This is what I'm working on. This is where you can find it. If I have intentions about this stuff, this is what I want you to do with that. You we do not want to wait until the end of our lives to have those conversations because that's when things get lost and they end up on eBay and that is the worst. You know? Ask family. Um, I think the first thing you need to do before you start digging into anything is to ask your family. Find out what things they know and get a piece of notebook out or get a camera out, record them if they don't mind and then go ahead and you know, put all that together, because you have to go through and analyze what you know. Uh, well, I will suggest you definitely to have a family tree that you can share with other people. Uh, MyHeritage is a wonderful platform for that, uh, but the idea is that other people can go, can see your research, can tell you if you are having mistakes or missing information over there, and try to also search for records, often because new records and new collections are being published. Find interesting things from the, from the unexpected. So look at records that you wouldn't anticipate would have anything valuable because they might have something really valuable. And that leads me to finding a record about land and it talked about how my ancestor rented for years because they lost their job and it made me feel closer to them thinking about their emotional struggle and I came because of that. So. Oh, I love that. That's <laughs> such a good suggestion. Yeah. It's perfect. I think that what's helped me a lot is the fact that I was able to uh, go to YouTube and, and get uh, advice from the experts. That's helped me out tremendously. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. Starting with your parents and grandparents and putting it on the computer and uh, it's a perm you know it's some I, nothing permanent but at least there's a record somewhere and I think uh, using the internet is the biggest tool. Encourage my family members to write their story. Successful genealogist uh, is about relationships and it's about engaging more people in the work so I can go out and I can engage and do my own research but I'm one individual. So if I can start to bring in other family members, other individuals to do team research, now I'm leveraged. Now I can um, accomplish the work much faster and do it in a distributed way all across the world. And you meet some awesome people at the same time. That's, That's right. a great suggestion, I love that. Always start with the living first, yes. and then you can work with the dead. Did they do anything exciting like how many states they traveled in, oh, how, many great one. how many countries they traveled in. Yeah. Um, Getting some of those details that aren't in records, right? Exactly. That's a great suggestion. And some of the stories that get lost. Most recently, I've like switched how I've organized my research log. Um, so just being organized, I think, would be the greatest tip. With DNA, DNA matches, uh, that helps to verify because I found uh, many um, DNA matches which go back to my great-great-great-grandparents. You know what? Teaching people. If you want to learn how to do family history, teach someone else how to do it. Because it gets you to look at things, just touch the microphone, sorry. It's fine. You look at things differently and it forces you to better learn how to do something so you can teach someone else. Yeah, one of the most important things to do excellent genealogy in my opinion is research logs keeping track of what you're looking at, what you're finding, and what you're not finding. As genealogists, we spend a lot of time looking at sources only to find that our, our people aren't in that record set. They're not in that book, they're not in that microfilm, they're not in that database. But recording what you've done and what you've not found will save you time when you come back to this problem a year or a decade later. You'll know, I've already looked at that book. I didn't see them in it. And you can then focus your efforts on on other materials. So definitely look at the research logs. There's a number of uh, software tools that can help you with this. Super important. If 
finding those little instruction guides on oh yeah on certificate stuff like that would that's be, a, probably be good that's a really good point because a lot of times people see a census record and they don't realize that the enumerators were given instructions yes and those instructions may be really important as far as how you might read the census record love that tip thank you bryce make a plan direct yourself um and and write down what you find and what you don't find yes and carefully analyze the whole document for all the juicy details. That's a great tip. Thank you so much. Interview living family members. Yes, right. so take, true. Take more pictures. Go to places where they lived and take pictures. Always, always look at the original record because there's always more on it than there is on an indexed record. Yeah. And it's valuable. It's valuable infor information. And when people are doing those leaf hints or whatever they are, they're not always the right person. So don't attach it until you've done some further research. That's a great suggestion. Ask questions to get to know their uh, grandparents, even their parents, you know, to get to the, know them, write down their memories, uh, take pictures, lots of pictures. The number one thing, and I jam on this all the time, is research notes, research notes, research notes. So, you know, keeping those research notes in chronological order, and I would say the second thing is to transcribe your records and then abstract that information, guess what, into your research notes. <laughs> because, and I, it's funny because while we're here at the conference, three or four people have come up to me and go, I am a convert, I do research notes now, it was a game changer. And so, um, yeah, that's it. I'd like to thank everybody that's been part of this video. Your ideas were so helpful, and I know it's going to make a really big difference for people as they're doing their genealogy research, so thank you.